Hi everyone, Matt Watson here. So I've been living in a van. You see, I've been to visit my mother, but because of COVID-19 and social distancing, I can't go into a house. So I've been sleeping in this on a driveway, which is actually on a ring road. But this isn't just any van, it's a Mercedes Marco Polo. It's a luxurious motorhome. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything about it and show off all its really cool features. First off, let's talk about the price. So this is an expensive van. The Marco Polo starts from £54,000. So this one here with the slightly high performing engine and the AMG line trim, which is like sporty kind of details and stuff, costs £67,000. Now for that, you can actually get a two bedroom flat in Warsaw, which is the place where my mother lives. So what exactly are you getting for all that cash? Well, first of all, you get a load of space, absolutely loads of it. So this thing measures over five meters long. So it's really roomy here in the back seats and you can slide the seats forward. Hello, hello, and they go all the way forward as well. <laughs> it's really easy to do. In a VW California, that system is a bit kind of temperamental and jerky. You've got a leather interior as well, so it feels posh and electrically reclining seats. No, you don't have to do anything manually here, oh no. And they are comfy as well, these seats. Then there's the feel of the materials inside. It just feels luxurious and expensive like you'd expect with a Mercedes. It's lovely. You've also got wooden yacht style flooring. Well, that's what Mercedes says, but actually it's just a laminate which looks wooden. It gets dirty quite easily because it's light in color, but it does help make it feel nice and airy in here. And of course you get an electrically operated side door. So, ah, yeah. just press the button and it'll do its thing. Mm, expensive sounding. You can turn the Marco Polo into a lounge by rotating these front seats. So there's a lever that you pull underneath the seat. You have to have the backrest in an upright position. And then it's just a case of rotating it round like that. It locks into this one position at first, but you can then move it again look, to go all the way around. Then it's just a case of doing it with the driver's seat as well. One area where the Marco Polo really excels over the VW California is the quality of its kitchen. It's a bit like comparing a Baltop kitchen to one from Ikea. If you don't know what Baltop is, look it up on Google. Anyway, so you do have all the essentials that you get in a California. So you've got a fridge under here and I've just got some champagne chilling. There's room for plenty of bottles of champagne in here actually. You've got a 40 litre capacity. Then there's your two burners there for your, your stove. It all looks very nice. And finally, your sink for washing up in. There you go. Though it's a bit annoying you don't get a removable bowl like you do in the California. Oh well. Now, the feel of everything and the look of everything is super, super expensive. And I like the fact that you have drawers which extend out and check it out, look. They have soft clothes, like a Mercedes S-Class. There's your cutlery drawer there. Very easy to see what you need to get to. And there's another big drawer in here which has a kettle in it for the stove. The only sliding door you have is this one here, but you need that because obviously someone's gonna be sat here. On the VW California, you don't have these extending drawers and that just makes it harder to find what you're looking for. One thing that is better on the VW though is the table. So it's the same thing that you like slide it out and then you lift it up and extend the leg. But the problem with this one is that it doesn't seem to lock into place very well. So it's quite easy to just get up and not, oh! Knock all your dinner everywhere. Well, I mean, that'd be annoying trying to clean out all this when you've got bolognese all over the floor. If you've got a kitchen, you're gonna need a water supply for it. And this is where you fill up the van's tank of water. So you can hold 38 liters of fresh water, but you also have a 40 liter wastewater tank because obviously once you're washed up and stuff, it's gotta go somewhere. Now, when you finish at the campsite, if you're allowed to, then you can just switch a valve in the wheel arch and it actually releases the water out of the wastewater. And it looks a little bit like the van's then having a wee. Now, this connection here is obviously for your main supply. So when you arrive at the campsite, you plug it in there and you can then run the electrical system off the mains rather than having to use the leisure battery, which is also included in the vehicle as well as the normal 12 volt battery. You see in the lounge, it's in the kitchen, now it's time to check out the bedrooms. So to access the upper bedroom, you have to use this control panel here, which looks like something out of the 1980s, it's really basic. So you twiddle the knob to cycle through different functions, such as the water tank level, the auxiliary heater, which will keep you warm when the engine's not running, the fridge, and the roof function. 
So you press that and then you just press one of these here to open the roof and it'll start to raise. To operate the roof, you have to press the button and hold it down. Before you do though, you need the ignition on, but not the engine running and a door open so that there's airflow because obviously when that's lifting up, it needs to be filled with air. I'm actually having to press the button with my foot so I can talk to you. And I hope it hurries up because I'm starting to get cramp in my toes. Come on, roof. Come on, hurry up. Are you there yet? I'm cramping up. <laughs> It's not the quickest. Ah, done. To lower the bed, it's just a case of undoing these little clips, one each side, and then down it goes. Now, it's not quite as posh as with a VW California, because that has gas struts, but actually, do you know what? That's a really simple, quick, easy solution that's not likely to break, and if it does, it won't cost much to fix. Welcome to my boudoir, everybody. Now, if you're gonna sleep up here, you wanna sleep with your head at this end because if you have your head at that end, you're gonna wake up in the night and smash your head in. It's actually quite comfortable though. So the mattress is thin, they all are on camper vans really, but as well as the normal bed slats, you have these plastic springs and they really do work. It's surprisingly comfy actually. The one problem is though, is that it's pretty narrow. So it's 110 centimeters across. The bed in the upstairs of the VW California is 120. And for reference, a normal double bed is 140 centimeters. So with two of you up here, you are fighting for space a bit, but it's doable. You do have some windows here with mosquito netting, which is good. And just do this up. Got a reading light just up here and you can alter the brightness as well. And if you need to charge your mobile devices, there's a USB port just at the front here. See? I thought of everything. To set up the bottom bunk, you have to move the chairs <laughs> all the way forward and then lower their backs down, which, because it's electric, you're not just pulling a cable, does take a while. And it makes a noise. Bear with me, it'll be worth it. Come on, bed. Right. We're finally there. Now, what you do is just fold this bit down, like that, and then slide this part back again till it meets that bit, push it together, and the job is done. What you can actually do is alter the stiffness or should that be firmness, of the cushions. So it's a little bit more comfortable. Now there are a few issues with this lower bed. For instance, look, there's some holes here. And this part of it is slightly different to this. So you do notice it when you're sleeping on it. Don't know whether it's best to go this way or this way. But you can get an optional mattress topper, which does just even things out and make it a lot more comfortable. You still have the same issue with the upper deck though. It's quite narrow, so 110 centimeters across yet again. So a bit snug for two people. I actually spent two nights sleeping in the Marco Polo on my mother's driveway on a ring road. And this is what it was like. So it's the middle of the night and I thought I'd just um, let you know what it's like to sleep in this van. So I've chosen to sleep downstairs. My girlfriend is actually upstairs. It's not that I've been naughty and I've been banished down here. It's because when you've got two beds and there's just two of you, you may as well make the use of the extra space. Also, it's quieter down here because you've got the sand insulation from the bodywork and the windows. The bed isn't quite as comfy as it is upstairs. That's why she's upstairs. I'm gonna go up, hopefully I won't wake her. Now, did you hear that? You really notice the cars up here. Actually, I won't wake her. I better not wake her up because I'll be in even more trouble because actually I am down here because I've been bad <laughs> but it is quieter so it's kind of worked out for me yeah if you're on a campsite and there's people awake around you they could keep you up if you're upstairs so I think I prefer it down here anyway let's continue with the tour so there's a decent amount of wardrobe space in here you have a wardrobe area here and here and there's even look a little coat rail in there as well plus 
your vanity mirror with a little light so you can see what you're doing when you're putting your makeup on. There's some more storage just here. And below there is your gas bottle for the stove. Up here, you've got some place where you could keep your sheets and stuff. There's also a drawer underneath the back seats. And then over there, you've got a cup holder, another cup holder lower down with a 12 volt socket in there for charging your devices. The Marco Polo comes with an automated tailgate as standard, and you can open it using the key. So you can do it from the inside here if you want to. And wake up in the morning and take a look out. So you can actually get the vehicle with an optional shower, which you can attach to the glass area up here, and then you plug it into the water supply just there, and you can have a shower in the morning. There will be a cold shower because that's just cold water. One thing I also like about it is this, look. To shut this down. Come on. You can open the glass part on its own. There you go. So you've got easy access to get stuff out if you need to. Though I wish you could open this part from the inside because yet again, I'll just pop back in. This would ideally be the way that you opened it up in the morning, wouldn't it? One of the things I really like about the Marco Polo is the fact that you can alter the brightness of the lights and you even have some ambient lighting, look, down here on the floor in the kitchen. It's cool. One area that the Marco Polo is way better than the VW California is the interior design and the quality, especially here in the front. I mean, it's just like a Mercedes car. It's not like a van. You wouldn't even know that it was based on a van, really, just being sat here. There is one thing that isn't so good, though, and it's the infotainment system. Now, Mercedes recently gave this car, see, <laughs> even on Ford, gave this van a facelift, but they didn't update it to the latest infotainment system. This is the one that you had on the old E-Class. This is ancient. Oh, it's so old fashioned and doesn't even have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Other than that though, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant cabin. Plenty of storage as well. Big door bins, cup holders down here, USB down here, decent sized glove box and a place for your sunnies up there as well. Great. However, there are some parts of the Marco Polo which aren't so clever, where quite clearly VW has done a better job. For instance, the picnic table in the VW is in the sliding door, and the picnic chairs are in the tailgate. Really, really brilliant idea. Whereas here, they're in this kind of like area, which takes up boot space. It means you can't put your suitcases there. You have to have them inside the van with you. The table itself is here. And this one, look, this is so new, still got the plastic wrapping on it. To put it out is quite easy. Just do this. I'm pretending like I know what to do. Do the legs. It could be a little bit quicker, maybe. <laughs> then you slot this. Come on, get in the hole. <laughs> I can't do it. There was me saying it's easy. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm starting to regret my words now because <laughs> it's taking a wee while, isn't it? Here we go. I think this is a table set up. <laughs> oh. So, not perfect, but I think once you've done it once or twice, you've got the hang of it, should be fine. And then the chairs. Come on. So there's all these like kind of like straps and stuff that they can get tangled around. And then you've got all your other gubbins in this area as well, like your cable for the main supply. So let's get the seats out. Obviously I've got to put the back on them as well. Come on. There we go. There's the back. I think it just slid off. So Oh, brilliant. I've got to collapse it a bit again. If this is yours, you've done it once, you'll have figured it out. This is my first time of doing this. Finally, I think I'm there. Come on. Right. It's all right. Yeah. That'll do for now. I need a rest. And, oh, I'm going to have to put that back together again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the table and chairs and the way it's stored on the Volkswagen is just better. The windows are a bit annoying as well. So yes, you have the usual kitchenette window, which is great, but this window doesn't open at all. And the back window, 
Well, it only pops out. And for some reason, Mercedes decided to electrify it. Well, it'd be much easier to just pop it like that. Oh well. Another thing is that you don't have an inverter power supply fitted to the car, so you can't plug things like laptops in. The only way you can do that is once you're plugged into the mains, then you can use this. And it's a bit annoying that you have to use an adapter because it only comes with the European socket, not the UK one. The most annoying things of all though, on the Marco Polo, are its blinds, especially the front blinds. So if you want to black out the windscreen, you have this kind of curtain thing that you have to dress the car with, because obviously it can't dress itself. So yeah, you have to get these straps and you put them around the sun visors. Like this. Come on, maybe fit on. This is German engineering, not at its finest. Let me tell you that. All right. Then this bit goes round the rear view mirror like that. We've got to the other side as well. Come on. Oh. No. Is this, am I doing it even right? There we go. Right, here we go. I'm starting to get really cross with this now. Why can't you just dress yourself, Mercedes? Then, look at this. How high tech is this? You have little suckers, and I feel like a sucker right now doing this, that you have to attach to the window, and you put that there like that, and do the same over the other side. Remember, this costs £67,000 for this one. And there, that's it, all private now. Although it's not all that private. You see the blinds for the other windows don't exactly fit all that snugly. So you can actually just peer around them a little bit like that, you see. Even with this closed, you'll see that someone can just about look in, which isn't ideal if you want privacy, but it's kind of cool if you're into docking. Hmm. Another thing that annoys me about the Marco Polo is that if you start the engine with the roof up, this happens. An annoying warning noise that just goes through you. Now I know why they do it, it's to stop you driving off and damaging the roof, but you should be allowed an override if you do want to turn the engine over, because you might have to, to I don't know, recharge the battery because it's running low, or as I found out last night, if it's getting a little bit hot in the cabin and you want to use the air conditioning system to blast it full of cold air, yeah, we just had to sit there listening to this until it cooled down inside and then we turned it off. Shut up! So then, what's a Marco Polo like to drive? Well, the first thing is, it feels more car-like than van-like. The suspension is brilliant. You hardly feel any bumps at all. It's really, really relaxing. Soaks them up brilliantly. The VW California is way more bouncy. As a result, it rattles more. This is quiet. I can't hear anything rattling at all. Another thing I like about it is the engine and gearbox combination. So Mercedes has given this a new two litre diesel. You can have it with the 220 version, which is below 200 horsepower. This is the 300D, which has 240 horsepower. It'll do 0 to 60 in under nine seconds. And if you put your foot down, that nine speed auto gearbox kicks down quickly. And then the van actually takes off. It really does motor along. The handling on the van is pretty good. So steering, it's it's fine, it goes where you want it to. It doesn't lollop around in the corners too much either. You can whisk this down a twisty road, no problem at all. This thing just eats at the miles. It's really, really relaxing to travel in. If I had to go a long way in a camper van, I'd choose this one. It's way better than I was expecting. Okay then, time for my verdict on the Mercedes Marco Polo. Now I will say that I think a VW California is slightly cooler. You know, it's got the heritage and you can get into like different paint schemes and two-tone even. But I'll say it's got those clever features such as the storage solution for the picnic table and the chairs and the blinds are better. But in pretty much every other aspect, I prefer the Marco Polo. It just feels more luxurious inside. I spent nights in both of them. I found this more comfortable. But where this really stands out is the driving experience. It's just way better than the VW. And that matters if you're going long distances across Europe, it'll mean that you get to your destination more relaxed and less likely to be having an argument with your passengers. Would I have one of these? Personally, no, I'm not into camping. I'd rather go on several posh holidays or maybe even buy a flat in Warsaw.